Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I finally, I had to, we, we haven't recorded in a while because I was in the skeleton spawner getting levels to get this damn Unbreaking 3 book. Finally. Do you have two of them or is it just one? I do. I have two of them now. Nice. So nice. Two, and we have, we have, two, we have two mendings, mendings, right? Two Unbreaking 3s, yep. All so right. we need to, mending, mending, Unbreaking 3, Unbreaking 3. I've been putting roofs on this village, and this fucking asshole zombie comes up and just breaks all the doors on this village. <laughs> Ruins everything. All right. Oops. But my little village, my little <laughs> equal opportunity housing projects are uh, looking real oh, nice. That's six level. Boom! My elytra is a perfection. I need to do that. Keep too. going to the stupid enchanting table for some odd reason instead of the anvil. I don't know why. Yeah, I think I think I always do that too. I think it's I think it's normal. Everyone does that. Like I'm gonna do an Here, enchant. Where, where are you at over at the at uh, the village? Yeah, I'll come I'll come to you. Cause Zo zombies, villagers are not for you. Uh, so you think exciting um, this week? So, well, well, we have uh, we have restaurant week over here in dc have you ever heard of restaurant week or do you guys do restaurant week yeah in yeah, your, yeah yeah this, this thing in your area so it's so we, we get um everything becomes you know for dinners it's a 35 five dollar prefix menu at certain places and you get to go to these places that are way more expensive than that but it's 35 dollars during restaurant week to go basically check them out so they do restaurant week in dc twice a year which is nice so we go we always make lots of reservations during restaurant week and uh, make sure we hit up a bunch of cool places but lately the what they've been doing for restaurant week is places will not only have the $35 prefix menu, but you'll look at the menu and it'll be like restaurant week prefix menu and give you all the options. And then the option that I ever want, it's like plus $15. That's kind of bullshit. That's not, that's not so restaurant like, week stuff. That's like normal price no, week stuff. It was like this one place. It was a steakhouse. And I was like, oh, sweet. I want to go check out the steakhouse. Uh, I've never been there. I've heard of it. And the first, they only have like three entrees that you can choose from. One of them being you know, fish, one of them being like pork and the other one is like the New York strip. And I'm like, sweet New York strip. And I look underneath the New York strip and it says it's fi plus $15 to get that. And I'm like, what the fuck? This isn't restaurant week anymore. If it's, you know, it doesn't everything always happen like this. You know what I mean? Like it changes is... from what it originally was to something else. Yeah. And it's, it keeps the name, but it's not that anymore. No. And it's, it's, Definitely not that. So that always that upset me. But we found enough other places to you know make do with Restaurant Week. Unfortunately, we did not th this t Restaurant Week. They did not have Fogo de Chao, which usually they do, and we uh -huh. usually will make a trip out to Fogo de Chao. So that was sad. Couldn't get there for thirty five bucks, but whatever. Um, we tried other things. So we went to this other place that is this really fancy like a place i would never ever go to in my life and we would actually none of us would ever go again it was good but it was you know nothing we'd ever go and pay their normal prices for but we walk in the door it was a friend of julia's had her 40th birthday this week so it was a dinner for her she wanted to go somewhere really fancy so julia picked out this place you know we'd never gone to it before let's go check it out you'll probably like it it's really big on wines and all this stuff so she makes a reservation we get there for our reservation, and it's one of those days, it's super cold in D.C. We go in, we w end up waiting behind this, this, this group of people, like, basically sniped their way in front of us as we were walking in the door, and then it Don't was Don't you hate those, that? Like, well, one guy, like, kind of snipes his way in, and then it's like, holds the door and kind of blocks us out to let his party through, which is like a 15-person party, and granted... They had a reservation. They had, like, the room in the back or whatever. So it's oh, not okay. like they got there before us or anything. But it still took them a solid, like, 
five minutes to deal with these people while we just sat there waiting um, at the at the door, which for me wasn't a big deal. But Julia was a little bit like miffed. She's like, what the hell? It just like snuck in front of us to basically take up all the time now that we just have to <laughs> sit here and wait longer. So we finally get up to the the, the, the counter, I call it, you know, the, the front desk person. And, you know, Julia says, you know, reservation for, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she looks at the computer and goes, yeah, as you guys can see, we're like really busy tonight. So uh, can you guys just leave and come back at the time of your reservation? Because we're too busy to see people early. How, 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 what was <laughs> the I difference in time? The, so I looked at the server, the lady, and I said, I'm sure we can find a spot to go sit at the bar for the next eight minutes. Because <laughs> I shit you not, it was eight minutes before our reservation. And she just like looked at me and yeah, I said it really snarky because I was like, what an asshole thing to say. Because she didn't even say, you know, your table's not ready. We'll try to get it ready. It was, can you please leave and come back at the time of your reservation? Did she not realize? Busy. Do you think she looked at the time wrong or something? I don't know because they made us go sit and uh, like we walked over to the bar area and there was just like one little table that was sitting there open. So we just sat at it and uh, it wasn't even one of those bars that you can go order drinks at. It's really like I guess you could probably go up to the bar and order drinks, but it was like they had people sitting at the bar all the way across as like their seats. Right. It was one of the sections you could sit in. So it would have been really awkward to like go up and get drinks or anything like that. But yeah. Um, we figured, wait, we only got eight minutes to wait. Who cares? We ended up waiting for about 20 minutes before they came over and got us, you know, our table, which, you know, yeah, I understand if you're busy, even if I have a reservation, I can't guarantee that I'm sitting down at a right. table at the time that my reservation was. I get that. I've worked in a restaurant before, you know, I know how all that stuff works, but to ask us to leave <laughs> and come back when our reservation wasn't for like, cause it was eight minutes away. I was baffled. That is, that is pretty damn bizarre. <laughs> I, I want to believe I, that I, she I, just I, looked I, at I, the I, thing I, wrong. Like she, she thought maybe yeah. like an hour difference or something. I, I want to believe that's what really happened. I God, I hope so. But because I, I, I did, I said it so snarky, dude. Because just because I, w I was so not expecting that <laughs> response, and then I looked at my watch, thinking that maybe we had like gotten there an hour earlier or something yeah. like that. And I was like, mm, yeah, no, 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 it's okay. We'll sit over here for eight minutes until you get our for us. <sighs> like, what the fuck? That's pretty awful. I don't know. I like, I don't even, I mean, I get it because when you work at a restaurant, it's, you know, just getting reservations is really hard. People go in and say, oh, what's that like if you don't have a reservation? You're like, oh, what's the estimated wait or whatever? And they'll glance down the list of people waiting and they're usually like, oh, it'll be about 20 minutes. Yeah, and then I'm like an hour later. That they can, <laughs> well, yeah, well, when they are correct, I'm always impressed that yeah. they get that shit figured out because. How the fuck do you look at a list of like 30 people waiting? Right. But I guess it just comes with time and you know your average customer and how long they normally, you know, take at a restaurant, I guess. There's this place in Charlotte. I was never good at judging. Uh, it's called Cowfish. And uh, my daughter really likes to Cow eat there. Cowfish? <laughs> yeah, so they serve sushi and burgers and a fusion of sushi and burgers. So they make sushi burgers and burger sushi. Um Burger sushi and sushi burger. And then they also just have, you know, regular sushi and stuff like that, too. Um, but she likes to eat there. And so they have one in they, – they opened one in Raleigh um, a couple years ago. So that's the one we normally go to. Uh, but we, whenever we went to uh, Minecon Earth, um, she knows it's right there near where we were staying. And so she was she said that's where she wanted to eat. Um, and so it's been a few years since I've been to that one. And it's in, like, the rich part of Charlotte, too, um, area called South Park. <laughs> like the show, um, so uh, that's where the show is based. I'm sure. Yeah, so we go over there uh, after we checked in the hotel. As people stand outside and stuff, and I go up and I'm like, uh, "Yeah, two. And they're like, "Okay, it's gonna be about three or four hours." <laughs> <laughs> three or four hours. I was like, "Ah, oh, okay, never mind." It was it was, it was it was it was it was even late too. Like we didn't uh, we didn't we didn't because we had to drive down to Charlotte. It was like eight o'clock, so it was like way past our normal dinner time. So we went over, like the, it's like, it's right there near the mall too. So we went over to the mall, and everything there was the same fucking way. Like we ended up eating at a uh, Cheesecake Factory, but we had to wait an hour to get in the Cheesecake Factory. See, I always wondered like when you get those super long waits. 
who actually waits for that shit? I know. Like, who's going to wait three hours? Right. I mean, the food is good, but it ain't that good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I've never. When it was a big thing. You could do the whole call ahead. Like, but a long time ago, you could just call a restaurant and make a reservation. Then most restaurants stopped doing that, but you could sometimes at, like, I remember this was big at Outback Steakhouse when my family used to really like going to Outback. You could call to have your name put on the list as if yeah. you had walked in the door. We used to do that show all up. the time. Yeah. Every time we've gone out back in the last, like, 10 years is what we've done. But now with, like, open tables again and stuff, everything is right back to. I think to, Outback um, still does that, actually, you what you just said. A reservation. But yeah, um, open. Yeah, yeah. They Last time I went to, it hadn't been that long since I went to Outback. a few months, and we definitely did that still. So it might not be that case everywhere, but it definitely is still here that way. Um, but I also feel like, you know, kind of different subject, but I feel like places like Outback is not as good as it used to be. Like, I don't know if I've changed oh, or they have, but I feel like. No, no, no. You are absolutely right. I, my family, we stopped going to Outback when there was this place in town called Lucky's uh, opened up, which is more of a. I get mom and pop shop. Like it's a, they got a couple restaurants in the in the area right around where my parents live, but I don't think it's a it's not a national chain. Mm-hmm. And that place is way better than Outback. And we started going there, much better steak and all this stuff. Well, last year sometime when I was back in town, we were up near where the Outback was at, and they were like, you know what, let's go check out Outback and see how it you know how it is because we haven't been there in a long time. So we went there. We got like the same thing we used to get: the blooming onion, the steak. Uh, uh-uh. uh, the steak was smaller. The blooming onion was like teeny. It was completely different than it was back in the day. Yeah, that's completely how I different. Like there was an Italian place we used to go to. I don't know if you ever heard. I don't know if they have their Carabas. Is that something you guys have? I've heard of it before, but I've never been there. And like it always felt like pretty much real Italian, like. Very good Italian, and last time we went, it felt like they had become Olive Garden or something now, where it's just like, this is all shit we get in Frozen, like, it's just awful. I don't know. Feels like a lot of restaurants do that now. Yeah, re- rest- restaurant quality um, of some of those chains, has, and that's the thing, is chains have a bad name, which is unfortunate, because there's some really good chains out there. Uh, granted, I haven't been to one in a while, but I to love Applebee's, because it was just Ugh. quick, easy food and yeah. cheap. Yeah, you can't get me in um, an Applebee's anymore. I've given up any hope of them ever having food that's not just microwave shit that I could microwave at home. Basically. Oh, I'm sure that's exactly what it is. But if I don't feel like microwaving at home, then I'm going to go. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, so some chain restaurants have a bad name for, you know, a, a bad, like a reason that they shouldn't necessarily have a bad name. But then you got, like, the good restaurants, like, you know, what I consider Outback used to be back in the day. They've given themselves a bad name by changing their shit to be, like, shitty. Yeah. It's it's really, really sad. I used to... I dated a girl for a while that uh, worked at Outback, back when Outback was still... Oh, fuck me. I just made a shit ton of gates. I was <laughs> trying to make fences, but... Um, I dated a girl who worked at Outback. She was a, a server at Outback. And so not only was it cool we could go and get her discount, well, back when it was still, like, amazing... Um, well, we thought it was amazing, but she would tell me on like a typical Friday night, there was, their lines were so long and they had those like two or three hour waits because let's be honest in downtown Flint, Michigan, uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago, Outback was the fancy restaurant. (laughs) Right. It's, you know, right next to the famous Dave's barbecue and, and, you know, all that stuff. It was Outback was your, your fancy restaurant. But she said that this dude came up once and he was like, how long is the wait? And it was like some older guy who was there with his family. And they said, oh, it's about a two hour wait. And he goes, really? And like shook her hand with a $50 bill. <laughs> and she goes, she was like, oh, I'm sorry. A table just opened up for you. And like she walked right up to the next table. But that dude bought his way into a table at Outback for 50 bucks. Damn. I didn't know that actually worked. I didn't think you could really. I thought you were going to be like, yeah, really? That was the end of the story. I didn't oh, know. Oh, hell no. If you were a server at Outback, would you not take 50 bucks to put somebody in the front I line? would be afraid I'd lose my job. Yeah, I mean, it all depends on... I'll tell you, we, when I worked at Starbucks... Um, what do you plan on doing with this area, anyway? I was going to start fencing it around it so we could protect the villagers, but I realized we probably need, like, a farming area. Yeah. I'm trying to think where to those start things. fencing it. Yeah. 
I don't know. Let's yeah, let's do that. That and do you think this is probably not enough housing for them to actually breed? Is it? Uh, not with the number we have, no. But I think if you add a shit ton more doors to these houses, it would be. Might not look as good, but if you just made all the sides doors, doesn't that increase the livable area? I don't know if that still works or not. I don't know if you can have like stupid door setups or if that's if that's still a thing or not. Yeah, I have no idea either. If that's actually still a thing. I mean, this is more than the average village has right now, but it's yeah, still but probably not enough. Yeah, we also already enough. have like eight villagers, don't we? I don't know. Let me see. Uh, but back when I used to work at Starbucks, and I feel really bad for uh, having done this now looking back, but at the time I was broke, and it was the it was accepted at my Starbucks. People would just, when you worked the night shift, people would come in, especially if they were like, you know, younger people or especially people you know, and they'd order a drink and you'd just make it for them and be like, yeah, just throw some money in the tip jar. Whoa, and you shit. wouldn't charge them. You <laughs> throw money in the tip jar. Yeah. Uh, so they would because we got a tip share from that place. Right. So you know, that was completely terrible because that's taking money away from the company. But, you know, right. not a phone. It's a phone. And it's my grandma, and she doesn't normally call this time of night, so I'm kind of wondering if it's important. But we'll finish out the episode. She's at least alive because she's <laughs> calling, right? So That's true. That's true. <laughs> as long as it's not... A burglar calling from her house saying, Give "That's us true." Money or, or there's die. someone outside of her house, or she's fallen, can't get up. That's probably none of those and things. And the only, and the only thing she had was the phone. To yeah, call. I'll call her back. We got we about didn't answer about four minutes. She'll she'll be all right for four more minutes. I'm a terrible <laughs> grandson. Did you ever work at a restaurant? I worked um, at uh, beside. Well, I worked at Southern Junction. Well, because you, you know. were like. Oh, so they, oh, I thought it was a Cracker Barrel. No, no, no. there's a place in thing. Texas called Southern Junction that was. It's it was, at the time it was the biggest bar and uh, restaurant in Texas, um, bar restaurant or combo or whatever. Um, but after that, I worked at Shoney's, which I've told you that story. That was because of oh, the, Shoney's. That's that's what I was thinking. Shoney's. Yeah, that was because of the whole the drop the water fountain on the girl. I broke her leg. <laughs> drop the water fountain. It was. I've told you, you that mean? story, right? It's such bullshit. Yes, you, you, you did. Yes, it's just funny to hear it because I think of it in the voice of "drop the mic," but instead it's "drop the water fountain." <laughs> uh, let's get mad about that one. Just, like, bullshit. Um, but yeah, Shoney's. But we didn't know. I mean, there wasn't anything like that at Shoney's. There was no. None, none of those. You didn't have like tip share and, and no and stuff. I don't, and I don't think the waitresses did. And like they, they had hired me at one point to come in in the mornings, um, like the during the first shift because they didn't have bus boys at all there. Basically, it was always the waitresses that did the bussing. Um, and I guess it was real bad. In the it was just super busy for the breakfast buffet, and so they they brought me in. And I only did it once because I ended up dropping a plate and like this shard of this plate went into this guy's leg and i've never seen anyone bleed so bad as this guy like i thought he was gonna die um so yeah i only did that once um <clears throat> but uh <laughs> it was funny that when they did bring me in like my mom was a waitress there and uh she said this so a lot of the waitresses were like who's this new bus boy you think he's gonna be still on our tips um uh, but yeah they didn't even give me any other tips <laughs> um <laughs> uh and a lot of and, like it's like southern junction the bus boys always got like the waitresses would always uh, like I was a busboy there too, um, and they at the end of the night they'd always you know, like each waitress would give me like twenty bucks, so that was always really nice. Well, yeah, I mean they probably either had a tip share or no, and that's what like one of the weird restaurant industry is. You know, if there's a if there's a tip share, you don't fuck with the tip share. Or people stop, uh, um, right, doing things for you. Um, and if there's not a tip share. You're kind of supposed to make sure you show your appreciation to people like the busboy, the bartender. Yeah, that's how it was there. They, they, there wasn't a tip share, and then they had to, they, they would tip out the bartenders and the busboys at the end of the night. Um, so yeah, but they, those waitresses there made so much fucking money because like every table, like especially during Christmas, every fucking table would be like a twenty or forty top, um, at these big company dinners or whatever, and then. You know, the tips are included and it's 20%. And, like, the bills would be, like, $1,000 because it's all fucking expensive-ass steak and shit. So, like, their their tips every night from, like, uh, you know, a 20-top could be, like, 200 bucks, and they'd have several of them. 
Um, so yeah. yeah, the amount of money that that my mom made waitressing there was pretty ridiculous. I would never think of Shoney's as like the. No, 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 no. This was Southern Junction. This was not Shoney's. Oh, Southern Junction. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I switched in between places. No, no, no. Shoney's. Shoney's awful. <laughs> no one made any money there. Yeah, I was, I was like, man, expensive steaks. I didn't know Shoney's had expensive steaks. No, no. They did have. So at Shoney's, when you're talking about your your uh, your company discount, um, at Shoney's there was a thing where uh, every like if your your employees you you get you know you get your food discount, and um, it, I don't remember the, the what the discount details were. All I know is that I could get a T-bone for three dollars. And so there was a period there for over a month where every night at work I ate a T-bone. They ended up uh, changing the rules on the T-bone steak because of me. You could no longer get it uh, with your company discount, employee discount, whatever. Uh, I worked at a wing place, and from 5 to 7 p.m. they had uh, 50 cent wings. But our employee discount was 50% off. So whenever I was working, just you put in your order during the five to seven time period yeah. and bought like, you know, 20 wings or whatever. So I'd get them for 25 cents a piece. <laughs> that was my break. Granted, you got you got food on your break, too. I used to take food uh, what I was allowed to get for my break till work because I worked a normal job during the day. I would make like a wrap because I was allowed to have that for, you know, my thing. And I'd have it for lunch at work the next day. But I'd eat the wings at night because man, mm. they were fun. And they were so cheap when you got a good discount off. We had uh, one of the cooks at the Shoney's I worked at worked uh, first shift Outback. And so she would all the time bring Outback food, like uncooked with her to Shoney's. Like we'd often have kookaburra. Uncooked and like cook it up in the back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how, how often we had kookaburra wings and like blooming onions, onions and shit like that. Because she'd just bring them over with her from first shift. That's, that's funny. I day uh, and I do. Sorry, I was gonna say I dated. A, I worked at a bingo hall as well, and a girl that worked in the kitchen, like a young young friend of mine. Oh, you met her? The girl like the girl. Halloween party that was uh, Hobbs or Calvin. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she um when she was like young, like fifteen or something like that. The a lot of the younger girls from the the school worked in the kitchen at the bingo hall to make extra money, and uh, she also had another job where she worked in a. A kitchen at some Asian restaurant down the street and she would work there for like an hour or two before coming to the bingo hall after school and then would she would always show up with this he was like buffet style place and she was allowed to take a food thing full like a um a clamshell yeah like takeout box full of whatever food she wanted when she left for like an hour and she would always just bring ridiculous things from the from there, and uh, her and I would sit there and eat at the bingo hall for dinner. <laughs> like, she, she was she, a fifteen-year-old girl was my sugar mama for food. When I was in college. Uh, that's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Well, with that, we should end this episode so I can call my grandma too. <laughs> it's not a terrible. All person. right, make sure grandma's okay. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. See you, everybody. <laughs>